gracias a Nina y a Riz, thank you so much, por acompañarnos esta tarde en una práctica que ya vieron por el título este, en el anuncio. Eh, va a ser una plática, creo que en principio entre Nina y Riz, va a ser una conversación con ustedes dos. Bueno, creo que para platicar de la relación entre arte y lo cuida. Y lo queer estaba pensando yo, bueno, ahora vamos a tener como del orden de dos horas para intentar definir lo queer, aunque a lo mejor no, es muy conservador, ¿no? No, no soy una conservadora. Lo queer no se puede definir con la sí, es. Pero en cualquier caso, más allá de definiciones, lo queer tiene como derivas, ¿no? Entonces, una deriva es la deriva teórica, eh, otra deriva es la deriva, la deriva política, la de la acción, y la de la práctica. Y venía pensando en la práctica como un estilo. Eh, no el estilo de vida del marketing y eso, sino el estilo en la, en la noción de Foucault, que ha sido tan influyente también para la teoría queer, ¿no? Como una práctica de sí, como una práctica del cuerpo en relación con otros cuerpos, con el propio y con los cuerpos de un entorno, ¿no? Entonces, este, bueno, creo que vamos a platicar de todas esas cosas. Les digo muy brevemente... Eh, aunque algunas de ustedes creo que ya conocen tanto el trabajo de Nina como el de Riz, pero muy brevemente para situarlas, eh, tanto Nina como Riz son artistas visuales, trabajan, les interesan cosas que tienen que ver con la interrelación entre género, sexualidad. Bueno, bienvenidos, bienvenidas. Yo soy Nina, ella es Riz y es increíble ver tanta gente. Uh, muchas gracias por venir. Um, hemos pensado, dice que yo, que vamos a hacer lo que yo hablo en español, después hago una traducción a disca en inglés o viceversa. Y algunas veces puede ser que mi, y hable en mi mente inglés, español, o so, por favor tengan, tengan paciencia conmigo o me ayudan con algunas palabras. Uh, hemos pensado que vamos a empezar a uh, platicar un poco sobre el título, el título como uh, la, la mirada, no, el arte y la mirada al pie, porque cuando nos, ven, nos vimos uh, para discutir qué título vamos a dar a este plático, ya empecé como esta, esta conversación entre nosotros. So I was just saying that you start. You start to do that as well. So, so uh, la primera um, sugerencia de risk para esta práctica era como la mirada transgénera, transgénera de acá. Y yo inmediatamente, como en, con mis conocimientos teóricos, pensé como en, en el texto de 2002 de Richard Calvestan, la mirada transgénera de acá. Y yo pensé como bueno ya, pero ya estamos como de reduciendo esta práctica a algo par muy particular, pero de todos modos uh, quería preguntarles otra vez para qué, por qué pensaste en este título. I didn't, I didn't know the complete context of where we were functioning in here, so I wanted to make clear that um, the subject would be in the title. And queer is a very broad word. I mean, you can you can put queer everywhere, which is great. I mean, I, I love the, I love the word, although there's a lot of criticism on it already. Again, you know, it's like there's we make something and we immediately start attacking it. Um, but for me, it was important to put the transgender in because it's in my work, as I will show later, it's a very important issue. But then, um, yeah, like in the conversations that we had and also like the problem with me was like if we, if we call it queer art, it's going to be, it's, it, it would be, you know, I would like, I would love to have the, this, this was the problem, we would connect queer to art and I didn't want to connect queer to art but I wanted to connect queer to the look, to looking. And also with transgender, you know, like to not define the art, but to define the look, to put a bit more stress on it. Not that there's something wrong with queer art, but just for this talk, it would be for me more interesting to have stress on the look and not on the art. Um, uh, no conocí, ya hablando como risk, <laughs> no conocí el contexto de Puej, y por eso quería como uh, dar el tema en el título. Como uh, queer es muy amplio, es una palabra muy amplio uh, 
ya para, para mí era importante uh, incluir transgénero, pero en la conversación me dio cuenta que quizás ya, ya es algo particular, porque si, si a mí no me gustó conectar el arte con lo queer, pero la mirada con el queer. Y ahorita que yo Nina quería uh, preguntar a Riz, pero ¿por qué no te gusta conectar el arte con lo queer? Porque, um, ya es, uh, porque sí, el queer es algo extra, pero no da una definición. Sí, estamos pensando que el queer no tiene una de definición en sí, pero el queer siempre es en el proceso y siempre estamos haciendo lo queer. No es algo que podemos decir X, 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 X. I was now already adding the question mm -hmm. in, in English, so I was saying, but why actually didn't you want to connect uh, art with queer? Because you said I could define it, but it's actually a, something extra. Because in the moment that we, because queer is something, if you say the queer is not, uh, there is not a definition of queer, because queer is something that, that is always in the process. So it is always like in, in, the, in the practice, in, in the chance of, so it would be interesting to know why you didn't want to connect. Uh, well, it's just why you put the stress. And um, I, I think it's more interesting to not only connect it to art, as in, a, as in art practice, but also to connect it to life in itself. You know, like, so this is to, to, to <coughs> just being, doing um, bigger things and not connected to, to a practice. Because it's, I don't know, this is like something that I'm always a little bit aware of that you then say like well this is my work and yes there it happens but it has nothing to do with me or something and it has it, it has to do a lot with me so i just want to not only connect it to my, my job <laughs> but to me it's simple but i have, i have no problem with, with no. Bueno, Risco otra vez, uh, uh, yo no quería uh, conectarlo solo con el arte, pero con la vida. En ese sentido, no solo con mi trabajo, como con, cuando hago arte, pero conmigo. Okay. Uh, y para Risco también, al inicio dijo que para ella se trató más so, uh, sobre el estrés, el estrés de la énfasis y el arte es como la, uh, la mirada y no el arte y la mirada queer, so ya el queer no está tan cerca del, del arte, más con la mirada. So en ese sentido, sí, quizás ya puedes hablar un poco más sobre tu entendimiento de la mirada uh, transgenérica, pero también queer. So in that sense, because as, you, as for you, it was important to put the stress and the connection between uh, the look mm -hmm. and not so much to the art. It would be nice if you could share with us your understanding of the transgender look or the queer look. <laughs> well, um, I I don't know. I think it's I think this kind of these kind of questions are easily talked to if we see a few of the works. I don't know if you if you agree, but mm -hmm. I could I could show some of the works mm -hmm. and we could because this is like a. No lo sé, pero eh, según yo es más uh, fácil hablar sobre eso cuando estamos viendo los, los, trasbatos, los trabajos y ahorita les va a empezar mostrando más, algunos de sus obras. Okay. <laughs> right. so, um, en la presentación de Riz uh, uh, se juntan como en ese sentido métodos diferentes. Un, por ejemplo, un eje son los métodos de hacer arte. El otro es como los métodos uh, de, la, de, las, de las temas que trito, con las que uh, trabajo. Otro es la distribución de, su, de sus obras y también cómo se posiciona como artista. Ok, we, we thought we would start with this quote from Judith, Judith Butler, Normie. I just, this is, my, this is my favorite quote, but it has a lot of stuff in there that is contradictionary. So, um, I don't know why I fall for it so much, but I love it. Because and of the contradiction, maybe? Yeah, yeah. Dualism, I guess, or whatever, I don't know. There is like, um, um, Nina found the original, or like the, you found the translation, right? You didn't yes. translate it. Yeah. No, no, yeah, so this is the, this is the translation into Spanish. Um, this quote sort of, sometimes put it at the end of my presentation, sometimes in the middle, and now we thought we would start with it, so please. Take some time to read it. So, did everybody have a chance to read it? So I will, I will just start. Okay. I first show a few works that I made 
when I was still working in a commercial context, I would call it, I was having galleries, going to art fairs, selling work. I could actually live from it, which was incredible, but on an economical basis, but on an intellectual basis, I was very unhappy. So um, these are works that I made then. This work is, um, oh no, sorry. Nina, you want to translate? Uh, uh, um, ahorita voy a mostrarles como uh, obras que hice en un contexto uh, comercial. Como, uh, es mi referencia a este contexto porque lo mos lo, las mostré en galerías, en ferias de artes y también pude uh, hacer... Oh, Ganar dinero. Y nada, nada. Gracias. <laughs> <laughs> so um, this one is called Giant, and I will immediately show you why. This is um, this is a direct quote from the James Dean uh, movie poster Giant. What I okay, let me first tell you that what I try to do is I try to make studio pictures outside in the real landscape. So I wanted these pictures to look like as if they were made in the studio. Um, I use only natural light, this is like the last sun of the day and, and I work very low key, you know, just my camera and me. Uh, no big crews or anything. Um, Nina? Bueno, este es un trabajo que, como ven, lo que está haciendo es este, reelaborar la película famosa de James eh, Dean Gigante y una cosa, esto es mío, que me parece súper interesante lo que intentó hacer fue en un escenario natural reproducir, o sea, forzar a la artificialidad, reproducir las condiciones de artificialidad del estudio. So what I what I also do is is I mostly work with already existing images in my mind. Like I, I don't believe in the artist that can create something completely new or never seen or done before. This is, this is something that is often put on top of the artist. I think it's completely rubbish. Um, <laughs> I search for a word. What is important, like I just want, this is how I, this is also like, okay, everything I say is for me, okay, if, if people, if other people think about it differently, it's fine, also if other people see something different in the work, I'm all for in for it, so it's just my opinion of how I approach my own work. Wow, <laughs> I hope you can breathe at the end. Um, so, um, what I did is I, I read it, the picture of James Dean, and in doing so, I hope I can slowly shift it a little bit. So this is uh, like repetition and repetition to use it to change already existing images that we, that we have in our head or in our societies and to change them and try to stretch them a little bit. En, en general, trabajo con imágenes que ya he visto y en ese sentido no creo en el artista que hago algo nuevo. Es una tontería total. Uh, pero bueno, rubbish. 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 Sí. Um, en general cuando estoy hablando en esta, uh, en esta presentación uh, el intercambio con, usted, con ustedes mis lecturas, so, por favor adelante si ten, tienen otras lecturas. Uh, en, en ese sentido con, el, con la imagen de James Dean, de James Dean, James Dean uh, de Lee, esta imagen ya muy conocido para hacer un giro en su lectura. Right. Um, okay, well, I'm just going to skip a lot because it's going to take way too long. <laughs> so, this is the next work. Um, this is a... I have to read this because I always get confused by my own sentence. This is a 2009 remake of my own 2001 remake of the film poster of Giant. <laughs> so, um, it will be an ongoing project. I will try to, if time is given to me, I will, like every eight years or so, I want to make another one. And I want to do the same pose, the same thing, you know, like James Dean died when he was 24. And I want to sort of um, touch this image of like this, this person that could not, that is only a projection. Um, I want to continue it and I want to be standing there when I'm, when I'm 80, uh, still doing this. And I want to put with that, I want to try 
I w hope that I can also put some uh, remarks to like how society is stressed on youth and health and all this stuff that has so much, um, you know, we're so much focusing on. So this is like a the storyline will be. I hope the jacket will 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 hold it. But <laughs> yeah. Sí, lo que, lo que intenta hacer RIS es eh, una especie de proyecto en progreso en el que cada X tiempo haga una reelaboración de la última fase del proyecto. Entonces, en esta imagen es una reelaboración en 2009 del proyecto iniciado en 2001. Y dice RIS que espera de 80 years old thing de que espera este, poder continuar el proyecto hasta que sea muy vieja hasta que tenga 80 años y que también lo que le interesa incorporar en cada reelaboración son nociones cambiantes sociales sobre cuestiones por ejemplo como juventud o sexualidad ¿no? sí. y también porque la imagen original de James Bean que falleció con 24 años nuestra imagen de James Bean es siempre joven como para ambientar un giro a eso que, que entendemos sobre la juventud. Okay, so here's the, the picture alone. Um, what I'm interested in is like reformulating questions about gender, and um, I want to keep keep asking questions, and in doing so, I want to make clear that there's like not one answer, which is for many of you probably already like known, but. This is something which is also important for me to uh, make sure that you will never come to a conclusion. And um, it also means that you um, accept the fact that in, in essence, uh, I do not know what, how gender functions, or I, I just keep looking for it and I keep trying to understand it. But the beautiful thing is that I really, I have no idea. I don't understand it. So, um, <coughs> Yeah, and this is this is one what I try to do. You know, I try to keep reformulating questions because I think like if you make a conclusion or anything, you just create. You know, you get you get into you create another norm and and you exclude stuff and it's not going to function. So, quiero reformular cuestiones de género y no no me interesa dar una respuesta. Según yo, nunca vas a encontrar una conclusión. Y no entiendo cómo que no funciona y por eso trato de reformular cuestiones que sin que sin dar a ese fijo. Right. So this is another one I took in 2001 in Spain. I also like this is also trying to to make studio pictures outside. This is this is why I cut off the feet at my feet. I mean it's me on the picture, but it's I don't really see it as me. Like it's there's a strange relationship. So I cut off the feet of the of the persons just to make sure that you that you do not know that I really stand in the landscape and I also use like this really dark shadows that it looks as if it's drawn into the picture. Esto es su intento también de seguir haciendo películas de estudio en paisajes eh, exteriores y me perdí con lo de los pies. I, I, I got lost with the feet thing. I just, I just, I, I make sure the feet are not on the picture because uh -huh. otherwise you see that I stand in the landscape and this way you have no idea, you know, I could be just a backdrop in the studio. Mm -hmm. Ha contado de la imagen tanto los pies como la cabeza en el primer plano y los pies de la segunda también para que nos quede esa duda de si realmente está en el paisaje exterior o está en un estudio como ocurría en las pelis. En las pelis. Like this one too, you know, it's like these little cutout figures you you just like a you place in front of the landscape. En general, para mí es importante que que el observe el observador la observadora se pregunte dónde se hizo la la imagen está fuera, está en estudio, está análogo, está digital, es, la, es algo artificial o natural, ¿dónde está la reali realidad, la ficción? Etc, etc. Yeah. Es como esto, estos espacios entre definiciones, categorizaciones. So it, it is all analog photography, just to add to Nina's story. Um, this is like an, a next series, I also made it in Spain. Um, what I make here, this this picture is called Mira, and it's sort of a reference to um, to these kind of pictures that I couldn't really identify myself with. I was having trouble, sort of, you know, I don't know, seeing myself as the 
model. I mean, I got a female body, I know that, but still, you know, I couldn't really relate to this kind of portraiture of femaleness. And I, um, but it's, it's in relationship to that. And um, what I do is like, I don't work with these images uh, next to me. I just, you know, I, I just believe that we have like a big database in our head. Like you, you constantly, we learn languages, but we also learn visuals. So we can learn to uh, create our own database of images in our head and we can um, take, if we, if we create new images, you don't have to, um, like what I did in the first work, you know, really copy James Dean. Here it's more like I just, I just rely on what I already know in my head and what you put in consciously, of course, too. Oh, shit. Estaba diciendo Riz que esta, esta imagen, la, la primera que ha puesto, que es de nuevo ella misma, está tomada en España, dijiste, y se llama Mira, y estaba justamente diciendo que um, ella lo que hizo fue posar como una especie de estas odaliscas que tenemos todos en este repertorio visual, y lo que se trataba de entender era cómo ella misma se relacionaba actuando como modelo, con un cuerpo supuestamente femenino, con estas imágenes que todos tenemos así en nuestra data, database, ha dicho, visual y la problematización justamente de entender esa feminidad en su propio cuerpo. So this is the last picture I show of these kind of works. You know, these, this, this works is for me, it's like my commercial sort of past. This is 2004, 5, I guess. And this was the moment that I really uh, had trouble uh, with making these kind of works because they, keep, they kept demanding more of the same stuff. And uh, for me, it was very clear that my work was about gender. Uh, it always has been, um, but I think my galleries never ever saw the picture using that word or ever touching the subject matter. I think she only talked about the figure in the landscape and those kind of things. Um, so for me that was difficult. And um, this is the last example I show. I, yeah, let's see. This is the last image of this series of images that I did in my past commercial porque tenía muchos uh, problemas hacer este tipo de trabajo otra y otra vez, porque mi galerista no entendí que se trató sobre género y no sobre un, una figura en el paisaje. Right, so I decided to change. Um, and I made these drawings. I can show you a few. Um, these works are inspired by uh, Brandon Tina. I don't know if everybody knows who Brandon Tina is. Um, I guess most of you know. Okay, um, so then I, I explain. Brandon, Brandon Tina is, is known because there was made a documentary about his life, and uh, there was this Hollywood movie, Boys Don't Cry, with Hilary Swink in the main character, and she got an Oscar for it. Brandon Tina was, uh, I will show, I got a picture of him too. Here is on the uh, left. So Brandon Tina was a, a transgender person, I guess uh, he would define himself as a um, uh, F2M transsexual, like female to male, um, man born in a female body, or however you want to uh, put it. So Brandon got uh, brutally murdered in um, 1993, uh, and um, also uh, Judith Jack read about wrote about this case a lot. Um, also about the representation of how it was, uh, like these films and everything. Well, he was murdered because two boys found out he was biologically female. For me, one of the interesting things, like this is another work I did, one of the interesting things about Brandon Tina is that he made sort of a um, different road than most transgender people decide in life. Like he was born in the capital of Nebraska. Which is, which is a pretty, it's a big town, Lincoln, but still, you know, it's not, it's not like San Francisco or anything, but still, it has some sort of gay subculture, and, um, oh, I should stop talking, right? No, no, <laughs> I continue, okay, okay. Um, it has some sort of safety network, like in a, in, in a gay transgender subculture, but he decided to, um, he had sort of uh, romantic visions of uh, small town life, and he decided to move to a very, he fell in love, he followed a girl, and he, um, he ended up in Fall City, which is a very small town on the border of Nebraska and Kansas. And there it just got worse and worse and he got murdered. So for me what's interesting about his story is like it asks questions about the possibility or the impossibility to live a transgender life outside of metropolitan areas, if this is possible at all. 
and how are we perceived outside of metropolitan areas, these kind of stuff. So this is why it's, for me, a very interesting case. Bueno, el trabajo, sí, este, este trabajo que tienen ahí en la pantalla es un trabajo que está inspirando en Brandon Tina yeah. y que probablemente todas conocemos por la película de ficción que está basada en la vida de esta persona transgénero, que es una persona transgénero FQM, de mujer a hombre, Boys Don't Cry, y eh, fue asesinada brutalmente en 1993. Eh, Judith Halberstam ha escrito mucho sobre las representaciones también este, como visuales, eh, particularmente esta película, y mediáticas también de la muerte de Brandon Tina. Eh, y una de las cosas que dice Risk que le interesan y que yo creo que tienen conexión con el arranque de la sesión de hoy sobre la importancia del contexto es que aparentemente, o sea, en la, digamos, anécdota biográfica de Brandon Tina, Brandon Tina vivía en Lincoln, en la capital de Nebraska, y ahí tenía una cierta red de seguridad, que, bueno, al ser una este, ciudad, un núcleo urbano, eh, hay una mayor tolerancia, hay grupos para la sociabilidad de personas transgénero, etc. Pero, aparentemente porque se enamoró de una chava, se fue a vivir a una ciudad mucho más provincial, en la, en la, en, en, en la frontera entre Nebraska y Kansas, Fall City, y entonces lo que le interesa mucho a Risk, el, eh, este trabajo suyo, es precisamente el, como las, condi las condiciones de posibilidad de lo queer, en dependiendo qué situaciones... Eh, geográficas, geopolíticas, ¿no? porque Risk se estaba refiriendo ahora a lo urbano versus, si quieren, lo, la provincia. Sí, y para mí, puedo también añadir una pequeña historia personal, porque esto fue como que tenía una residencia en un pequeño pueblo en España, y decidí que este sería para mí el lugar perfecto para salir por la primera vez, así que esto fue como mi primer salir como transgénero. ¿Dónde? En Cayosa de Sare, en el pueblo de Cayosa de Sare. En Cayosa de Sare. Wow. ¿En Segura? Murcia. A little bit higher, yeah, Murcia, Murcia, Valencia. And what year? Uh, 2004, oh. I guess. It was no, 2004. No, 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 wait a minute. No, it's not true. The pictures, no, I made this, the drawings in 2000. The pictures are made in, I made in 2002. So 2002, and this was interesting. You know, I was already two months in this little village, and I I stepped out, and I had my breast bounce and everything, and I don't think anybody else noticed, but still for me it was a really big deal, and I don't know, it was it felt very, yeah. <laughs> okay, so dice risk. Ah, okay, sorry, translate. Dice risk que añadiendo como una anécdota personal a esta historia. Ella hizo una residencia en un pueblo muy chico de España llamado Callosa de Segura, que es de Alicante, Alicante, no Murcia, ¿sí? Alicante. Ya. Yeah. Yeah. <risa> eh, y que entonces para ella fue como un poco revivir la, la propia historia que nos acaba de comentar Elena en la traducción. Eh, decía que ella lo que hizo fue empezar a, a ponerse sus vendajes y que está segura de que nadie se enteró de lo que estaba haciendo, pero que igual para ella fue bien interesante. Y quizás también en relación con su pasado comercial, es un, es un trabajo en ese sentido íntimo porque el disco nunca va a vender este trabajo. O sea, es un trabajo que ustedes pueden ver ahorita, yeah. <laughs> es el último momento. No, es verdad, sí. Es algo también que I is those little spaces that you create as an artist to try to keep things for yourself also, to not always, because this is the thing, you know, like they think like if you're an artist, you produce things and these things are sold, like as if this is the normal, this is the normal, sorry that I used the word, <laughs> like as if this is the road that you just walk on, but of course it's not, you don't have to, but it's something, you know, if you, study art and you are picked up by a gallery, it's like, it seems as if this is the only thing that is possible. But of course these are all structures and you can also undo them. Esto también es como un espacio que Risk uh, crea para ella misma, porque uh, ser un artista no significa que el último objetivo es producir para un mercado que vende las cosas. En ese sentido, aunque en su caso, en el caso de Risk, una galería le ofrecí como vender sus cosas inmediatamente cuando terminaste con una escuela de arte. 
pero de todos modos RIS quiere encontrar espacios que rompen con, esto, con estas demandas en este sentido. Yeah. So, um, then I made this, this um, self-portrait because this is the first time I really said like, okay, I made a self-portrait. I also called it RIS, like my name. And um, I was just really sick and tired of like people ignoring my subject matter, like this gender stuff. So I thought I would put it like really, like the first thing you see, like straight in your face. And uh, so these are my first practice, I would say like these are my first tryouts to how to deal with gender if you really make it visually. Because you know, it, is, it stays a very difficult issue in visual language. Because I will explain like this is, as I said, this is a self-portrait, but I do not, I do not consider this as a, a statement that I want to be a, a man or like that I want to be biologically male, because I do not see myself as a man and I do not see myself as a woman either. You know, this is the thing. Like, I, I, my, I thought, I thought a lot about transition, but I don't think it would solve anything because I would be trapped in the same problems. I don't say that it doesn't work for, I know many people who it works for, I mean super, this is really the best thing ever, that it's possible, but for me, I, I, it wouldn't function, it, it, would, um, it would stay problematic. Um, so this is also why I made this picture, I, you know, I see it as me with a beard, and the beard doesn't say that I'm male. Um, of course we can go to Beatrice Preciado at this point, she wrote a lot about this stuff, and I'm a big fan also uh, of her writings. But um, I don't know if that's maybe the right moment. I don't know. Yeah. No, I'm just fine. <laughs> but maybe first translate. Or it's very well known in the heroes. Yeah, that's I thought like people would know. Ja, es ist mein primär Autoritrato, dann bien, die neue Nombre, ein Titel von Risk. Uh, y quería como tratar hacia como una imagen que la, el público no puede ignorar el tema, el tema que es importante para mí, el tema crucial de todo, de muchos de mis trabajos en género. Y, pero de todos modos es algo muy difícil en la, uh, hacerlo en la lengua visual, o sea, en ese sentido es algo como un choque, un choque en, en la cara. Uh, pero eh, la imagen no dice yo soy un hombre, es como, aunque uso una barba, la barba no significa que soy hombre. He pensado uh, mucho tiempo uh, como en, en la posibilidad de, de transición, de transición a, y también como, como a la operación de cambiar mi cuerpo y todo a un hombre, pero para mí no funciona porque los problemas no cambiaría, tendría los mismos, o casi los mismos problemas, por eso... Okay. Um, no, yeah, almost, yeah, casi. Casi, yeah, casi. Yeah. Very big. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But as I said, like, like you know, like, Veta wrote wrote about this stuff, and she can explain much better than I can. Um, o diferente. Según <laughs> Vizca, okay. uh, Beatriz Preciado puede explicar todo eso, mucho mejor que él, y yo dije, bueno, well, diferente, una manera have, diferente, quién sabe. I now think of a video of <laughs> this year, as I, we should have put the video on, but okay, it doesn't matter. Anyway, um, I continue, I, I just, I, um, I put this picture in because I just wanted to very quickly go back to this database, that when I saw my picture, like when I saw my own work, I was like, oh, this looks a little bit like this Rembrandt light, you know, like I'm Dutch, so I mean, Rembrandt is sort of, we grow up with him. So I was like, oh, this is interesting. So I started looking at his work again, and I found this portrait of a bearded man. And, you know, like, this is something I mean also with like having a lot of information in your head, that sometimes it's not even necessary to, to do it before. You can just trust on what you know. And, you know, this is, I was very happy when I saw the, the reference that I made without knowing Sí. Bueno, que quería regresar con este trabajo a la idea que ya vimos antes de la base de datos visual, como diacrónicamente visual, y que bueno, RISC en la presentación no lo dije, pero es de origen holandés, y entonces, bueno, me imagino que ustedes aquí serían eh, Frida Kahlo, nosotras serían no sé, el cambiador, no sé, cada quien tiene como su base de datos, ¿no? This one is known. 
Yes. <laughs> this is the original picture. <laughs> it's not purple. Um, <laughs> It's a, it's a model. For me, it was really important at this point in time to start using models to make sure that it would be clear that it wasn't some sort of personal fetish, like that, you know, I was the only one that had this perverted ideas or anything. No, it would like there are many people out there who feel and experience it exactly the same ways or maybe slightly different, but are connected. So I wanted to make sure to put in other people now into my work, to not only connect it to my own being. Sí. Creo que esta imagen es eh, bueno, muy conocida, seguramente todos la conocéis además porque es la imagen del cartel, originalmente es así, ¿no? morada, <risa> eh, y dice que le interesa mucho porque hace eh, o incide en la necesidad de utilizar modelos, es decir, no pensar en que esto es una cuestión que tenga que ver con su preferencia personal o su fetichización de la imagen, sino que es un modelo que podría servir para compartir ciertas cosas por gente que está experimentando cosas parecidas por lo menos a... Right, and I made this picture originally for um, a religious museum in Amsterdam, and they had a lot of trouble with accepting it. Um, but I had something again. <laughs> I came up with this picture. I I, um, I said I combined the stories of Salome and John the Baptist in one person, and I had a whole essay written about the the question of guilt and blah. I don't know anymore. It was like. And they accepted it, and I was very happy. And actually, it, it worked out really well. But it was it was it was nice to have such a tough fight with this um, with trying to get a work into a different context or like different yeah set of rules almost it was. Y en, bueno, en esta dice que, que la imagen la presentó por primera vez a un museo de arte religioso que tuvo muchísimos problemas para aceptarlo. Entonces ella vio la posibilidad de argumentar a partir de este cuadro tan conocido de Caravaggio, de Salomé con la cabeza de San Juan Bautista y a partir de ahí pues de nuevo este, hacer, esto es parte mía, ¿no? como esa estrategia de hacer referencia a la gran historia del arte para poder hacer que, que su foto fuera aceptada en este museo. Right, I, oh sorry, I made a series called Liberté for Two, like Freedom for All. This is uh, the first series, it's also a model, um, and what I try to do here is to how do you call that, like flip or change the, the first concept I had from making studio pictures outside. Now I try to make pictures that in the studio that look as if they were made outside. <laughs> Am I explaining right? Yes. yes. Um, so these, these are slide projections, just a backdrop, you know, just like this milky paper hang in, hang in, a, in a big room and you put a slide on them and I put the models, and I took like these slides, and these are from graffitis that I found in the streets. Um, so this is the first, I want to show some more. Uh, bueno, eso es, la serie se llama Libertad para to, todos, todas, todos. Uh, y cambié el concepto. Uh, en ese sentido, hice imágenes en el estudio, pero parecen que hubieran hechos fuera. Y uso el, el método de, de proyectar diapositivos de imágenes que encontré en, en las calles. Here's another one. This is, I think it's about the only time I use the flashlight. I try to make it very obvious that these pictures were constructed, so people would also look at the model longer, like they would understand that everything they see they have to look again and, and reconsider if what they see is, is what it is. I mean, I don't want to... Yo traté de hacer uh, muy obvio que la imagen es con, uh, con, construida, es construida, <laughs> sí, construida uh, para que el público vea más tiempo al, al modelo. So then I made this picture. This is a this is a whole series I made. This is also I will say it again. Like it's all analog photography. So I I let somebody scratch this in my back. Um, I know people are going to ask. So you see, um, this is called Under Influence, and I made a whole series of um, people that were of influence for me, like like not only people, like books, movies, uh, music, uh, whatever, artists, and um, I only show this picture of this series, it's called Normal, and it's called Under Influence, Catherine Opie, because it's a, it's a tribute, I would call it definitely a tribute to Catherine Opie, who is, who made, among other things, this work, and Catherine Opie was the first artist that actually, not introduced, but she managed to make 
portraits of drag kings and get them into the main art market. Like she would actually sell them and you know they would be considered mainstream art, which was interesting. It was sort of a, the first step of commercializing transgenero, which is now <laughs> very much further <laughs> on its way. Um, yeah. Oh right, I have to say something else about this. This is this is for me very very interesting. Catherine Opie always said that it, this is a very personal work because a relationship had just uh, been broken, and she made this work on a very personal level. And what I tried to do is, I thought like, well, I I will make a political statement out of it. But for me, this work has always been political. So uh, when I read that from her, like that she said, like, no, it's only a personal statement. For me, this is, I'm not sure if I would talk to her, if she would say the same thing, but it was like in print, you know, like, you never know if that is true. But still, it was interesting for me, like, where does the personal and the political sort of meet, and how do they interfere with each other? Um, I consider it definitely a political work. Uh, esta imagen y la siguiente foto parte también de una serie que se llama Bajo la Influencia y en la que Riz lo que ha intentado es un poco como recuperar eh, todas las influencias de todo tipo, literarias, visuales, etc. Eh, bueno, en su vida y en su trabajo. Y decía ella, and we can yes, go to the next one, to the next sí. image, eh, que bueno, es, de alguna manera esta serie es un tributo a Catherine Opie que es la primera persona que pone el tema de las drag kings en el circuito del arte mainstream y bueno, algo también muy interesante que estaba ahora comentando Riz es que aparentemente Catherine Opie siempre ha mantenido que esta es una imagen muy personal y decía Riz que para ella es una imagen este, profundamente política Entonces, que, bueno, es ese diálogo o esa comunicación entre lo personal y lo político que a Riz le interesa mucho y le parece este, muy productivo en su trabajo. This is another self-portrait. Um, I, yeah, I, I can, well, I, should I read this? Yeah. I can read something. For me, this is like a combination of a drag king and a drag queen, and it's very obvious because, you know, I'm like, uh, I was born in 72, so my childhood heroes were Boy, Boy George. I was a big fan of Boy George, which is the top part of the picture. And the bottom is, Bo is uh, George Michael for me. You know, this is like where I sort of, I have like images of them and, you know, George Michael with a very stylish beard and Boy George with a beautiful makeup. So you have a combination of the drag king and the, and the drag uh, king here for me. Bueno, eso es otro autorretrato, eso como una combinación de drag queen y drag king uh, y como nací en 72, uno de mis héroes era Boy George y otro como George Michael, so, arriba pueden ver Boy George y abajo como George Michael, su barba tan sexy. 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 Sí, es muy atractivo, es muy atractivo. Pero es muy sexy. And stylish. Stylish. Okay, stylish. Not sexy. <laughs> I thought that George was sexy. But um, so what I, I, I have here like like both drag kings and drag queens they borrow and quote existing images of femininity and masculinity and they place them in another context. And um, like the result of this, or what they hope, or what, what I hope that they, the result of imitating gender stereotypes is not to confirm them, but to disrupt them. Like imitating and quoting and borrowing of already existing gender images and, and snatching them away from the social surroundings in which these images normally get their meaning is an uh, important mechanism for political change, I think. Um, mainly because of the disorganizing um, function of it. I don't know if that is to translate. Bueno, que, que la figura del drag queen, de la drag queen, claramente lo que intentan es desestabilizar la naturalización del género este, y que Riz, como han visto en su trabajo, lo que intenta 
hacer es precisamente problematizar una idea normativa del género, una idea este, que de alguna manera fuerza a seguir patrones de lo que es masculino y de lo que es femenino y le parece que este intento suyo de, de desestabilización de los patrones de género, de los de, modelos de género dominantes, pues puede tener como un impacto o puede este, movilizar para el cambio político. Sí. Bueno, um, this is me on the left. I, I, I gave a lecture, like, I don't know, like, yes, yesterday, I think, yeah, yesterday, and nobody <coughs> recognized me, so I not say, like, okay, this is me on the, on the right side. Um, this work, work is called Bio Drag Queens, and it's a form of drag that is called like biological drag or double drag, like biological born females, like the so so persons with a female body performing as men dressed up as women, or the other way around. And what is important for me is to show that that like being born with a female body, it doesn't necessarily mean that you feel any great need to um, to take on a female identity and um, that sometimes the gender that people think that belongs to your body can feel like a total performance. Bueno, eh, primero aclarar que ella es la de la izquierda. No, derecha. Primer, primer de derecha. Al primero dijo la izquierda. Well, no, I'm there. Ah, okay. Sí. Con los ojos azules. Ok, y el, el nombre es Bill Drag Queens, que sería como eh, Drag Queens Construidas. Y no, Ah, bio drag queens. Ok, y entonces es un, es un juego doble en el que eh, el performance es, es doble porque es, es un juego en el que es una mujer biológica disfrazada como un hombre que se disfraza como una mujer. ¿no? Hay como esa doble maniobra o a la inversa también. El concepto principal es que incluso al nacer con un cuerpo biológico de mujer no necesariamente se está a gusto con esa identidad de mujer y hay quien puede eh, reconocer todo el sentido performático de, de aparecer y de presentarse como mujer, ¿no? Todo el... Okay, uh, now I show a word which sort of got rediscovered here in Mexico City. <laughs> I I had a very negative experience with this work and uh, I actually I met somebody who um, who in the end understood that I made this work and she was like, oh really, you made that work and this is so interesting and then I just, I... This is how this <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, 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 first the student. Oh, the, okay. No, and then I decided to show it to Nina and she said like, we have to include this in the lecture. So, here it is. For me, very strange to see it again. El título es Déjales hablar. Yeah, maybe you, maybe you, t you take over. Y, uh, no, no, la idea era que antes que Risk explica hoy como yo, uh, uh, viendo los, la, la traducción de, la, de los desvivimientos de, de Risk, que quizás oh, ustedes um, nos dicen qué piensan sobre este imagen. Muy espontáneamente. Ah, no sé. ¿En el Vaticano? ¿El Vaticano? Ajá. ¿De dónde son las Uh, oh right, this is important. Sorry, did I? It's an exchange between Suriname, which is an ex-colony of Holland, and Holland. Like we did an exchange program, so I went to Suriname for two times, two times one month, I think. And in the end, I made this work. This is maybe, but Nina, please tell them. Oh, <laughs> give them a little bit of that. Bueno, la, uh, the Baratay significa la, es como, es un periódico en, en Surinam y significa la, uh, el tiempo de arreglarlo. Ok, <laughs> yo ahorita voy a leer. <laughs> bueno, en esta imagen me pongo en el lugar de lo exótico, de lo mirado, utilizando un lenguaje ecléctico de la imagen que cada observador da puede leer en una manera diferente dependiendo de sus referencias. Al mismo tiempo, lo, mir mir lo mirado, él, la modelo, retoma el poder al devolver la mirada al, a la observadora actual. Y por lo tanto se convierte también en lo activo. Para mí, esta imagen contiene una gran cantidad de pensamientos y sentimientos personales. Funciona como una expresión de mi encuentro con su Surinam para destacar algunos elementos. Déjales hablar, es el nombre de la anguisa, anguisa es la palabra surinam para pañoleta, específica en la imagen. 
la anguisa incorpora una forma de lenguaje visual. El patrón de nudos transmite un mensaje específico, del cual se desprende el nombre de cada anguisa. En Surinam, la anguisa no solo se utiliza para expresar sentimientos personales, sino también se usa como una herramienta política. En esta imagen, la anguisa está hecha de periódicos que fueron publicados el día siguiente al asesinato del político holandés Pim Fatain. Podemos reconocerlo en el frente de la anguisa. La banda se hizo con el diario surinimés de Barretaet, el tiempo verdadero. La imagen es un autorretrato que me muestra en mi cuerpo biológico femenino y sintiendo como una drag queen, un hombre perfumeando la feminidad. La imagen se refiere a Pim Fratain, un individuo muy franco, extravagante y homosexual, que, en mi opinión, se contradijo a sí mismo a través de sus puntos de vista políticos, conservadores y de extrema derecha. La exhibición de las partes íntimas del cuerpo es una declaración en sí misma. Muestro la verdadera piel blanca de mi cuerpo, mi pecho, en contraste a la piel artificial blanca de mi cara para enfatizar la fragilidad, la inestabilidad y la fugacidad del cuerpo humano. Uno de los marcos intelectuales de este trabajo es un libro escrito por la antropóloga social y cultural Gloria Beckham, The Politics of Passion, Cultural Section de la Mujer en la Diáspora, sorry, <laughs> afro Suriname. Surinam. Deca escribe, en Sranan Tongo, es una de las lenguas en Surinam, hay una gran cantidad de términos para hacer declaraciones sobre el yo, que apuntan a la multiplicidad y la maleabilidad del yo. Una de las características más sorprendentes de este esquema es que es posible hacerlo independientemente del género, para hacer declaraciones acerca de uno mismo en una de tres formas. Primero, en términos singulares y o plurales. Segundo, en términos masculinos y femeninos. Además de, además de estos términos, hay un tercer modo para hacer declaraciones acerca de uno mismo, en términos de construcciones en la tercera persona, es decir, en términos de su vinti, y vintis como un espíritu. Espíritu se podría decir, ahorita no estoy hablando, es mi vinti. Mi vinti habla español, yo ni no, no. Con esta fotografía quiero expresar el punto crucial de mi trabajo, que la identidad no debe entenderse como algo lógico y coherente, sino como algo que es dinámico y fragmentado, un proceso, un proceso cambiante que está en constante movimiento. Ok, something completely different. <laughs> This is Easy Rider, this is a road movie and a big panel. And um, this is a project I did. What I try to do is to try to meet one of these head characters because I try to... Um, wait a minute, I have it here. An accountant? No, where is it? Oh, I didn't wrote it down. Well, it doesn't matter. I will do it by mind. So, I want to meet one of them. I, I, I look for movies where you have like two male head characters, like main characters. <coughs> And I want to like do a meet and greet with one of those characters. <laughs> so I dress up. You know, this goes really fast, so you have to be fast. I mean this this is Dennis Hopper, he was like one year before he died. And I dress up with my motorcycle jacket and I pretend to be like an easy rider, like Peter Fonda like. But of course, you know, I may look like Easy Rider, but here it's like about being the difference of, of being and uh, performing of course. I mean, Dennis Hopper is Easy Rider, there's no doubt about it. So there's like this difference between, um, yeah, like, like being, I would call it, right? Is that the right in this word? Sign? Being, right? Being. Yeah. And I, um, I can show you another one that I managed. Um, this is Paris, Texas. It's another road movie I love. <laughs> but it's on a gender perspective also very complicated. I must say, I mean, if we're going to analyze it, oof. but still, the movie is, um, it's, it's, a, it's a cult movie from Win, Win Wenders from 1984. And um, I managed to get in contact with Dean Stockwell, like the guy on the, on the left here too. Wow. 
So this is him, and I play Travis, Harry Dean Stanton, in the, in the movie. And I'm now working on Jack Nicholson. If anybody has a contact, <laughs> please. <laughs> because I've been trying for a long time, and this guy is really difficult. But, um, there's like, I think it's the, um, the one with the crazy, is it One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest? Uh, where I, I want to play the one, the really, like the completely local. <laughs> and with Jack Nicholson next to me. We have a cigar, of course, and the, the old the old guy should have cigars. But okay. Creo que casi no necesito traducción, pero bueno, igual es un proyecto que se llama Movie Proyecto, proyecto de películas, y en lo que ella lo que ha buscado son pelis que tengan dos personajes principales masculinos y buscar a uno de los actores y vestirse ella como otro de los actores en la película y entonces eh, hemos visto Easy Rider donde Dennis Hopper este mi mayor en una imagen es preciosa esta imagen y luego otro eh, Paris Texas y sale con Dean Stockwell eh, haciéndola ella misma de Travis en la película no sé si conocen la peli yo es que sí entonces Travis es un gran personaje para mí y que tiene ahora un proyecto, si alguno de ustedes tiene el número de teléfono personal en el mail o lo tienen de amigo en Facebook. So, um, then I also made a series of works based on, on road movies, and I called them like a non-narrative road movie. Um, I called it Six Brides or Six Brothers. Um, I tried to, to give like this, um, this rebellious and this, this, this sort of dramatic expressions that these movies have, I try to give them a sort of a new gender interpretation. These photos also return a little bit to the first photos I showed. Um, I, it, it turns a little bit toward, towards the first pictures in nature, uh, but now with the knowledge what the work is about, you know, it's like... Uh, so, this is one of the pictures. I, I see this as a sort of a classical um, triptych, like me learning from my, from my ancestors how to smoke or something. This is a landscape in the southeast of, of New Mexico. I guess this one, this also has to do a lot with um, what Nina also said at the end, like that I think like identity should not be understood as a logical and, and a coherent thing, but something dynamic and fragmented and um, like a changeable process and also constantly moving. Another picture of it. This one is called, ah, you can't really see, okay, this is, I have a I have a beard. I'm like in silhouette, but I but I do have a beard. And, and the picture is called Cowgirl. Well, it's about it. And I showed it like this, you know, like on top, the black and white, and on the knee, the color one. Esa serie también está inspirada en películas de en road movies, que son estas películas eh, estadounidenses de viajes, ¿no? De de viajes por carretera, sobre todo, como que siempre tienen como este elemento de autodescubrimiento. Ella las llama seis novias o seis hermanos y quiere rescatar como este sentido de, de rebeldía que es también un poco lo que remite eh, y, y en lo que se parece a las primeras imágenes que mostró eh, solo que hace una nueva interpretación de género ¿no? a partir de, de estos retratos por ejemplo funciona un poco como un tríptico donde ella está fumando pero al mismo tiempo están como estos dos referentes masculinos súper importantes ¿no? como ella decía como aprender a fumar de los ancestros la siguiente es un paisaje del, del sureste de Nuevo México y se repite un poco lo que, lo que decía Nina hace rato de la identidad no como algo coherente ni estable sino más bien algo fluido y en construcción ¿no? que es básicamente algo que permea el trabajo de, de Ruiz y ahí a pesar de que no se, no se aprecia muy bien ella tiene una barba y la, el nombre de la, de la foto es Cowgirl, vaquera y esta es la manera en la que las, las expone las, eh, fotografías en blanco y negro van arriba y las que están en color en el mismo formato abajo. So, um, now is a work that I um, I only show it in a presentation. Um, also, in talking to Nina, uh, we decided to show it also because I, I made this for a friend of mine. So it's not something that's out there on the market or whatever. It's just made for him. It's, it's well, as you can see, like trans Amazonian road trip to Topeka, Kansas. And Topeka, Kansas, is I made it together together with Kayate, and she's a spoken word artist from Berlin. Topeka, Kansas is a very strange town, and it's the place of birth of my friend, who's called Sandsmuir Bussing. 
uh, he's married to a, to a Dutch guy, so that's why he has the Dutch extra name, but he's called Sands Murray, and then Rossink is his husband. But it's also the place of the Westboro Baptist Church, and I don't know if you know who these people are, but here they are. <laughs> They're all over the town, and they are they are all over the United States. They but they this is what they do. They sort of they stand next to the road and they scream at you, and they uh, they I don't know. They're and at funerals. And at funerals of, of soldiers of everybody. It's like um, so. This is where he grew up, and now I'm going to show you a picture of my friend. <coughs> this is my friend, Sense. <laughs> Sense is very queer. <laughs> and um, he didn't have such a good childhood. Uh, he had a pretty rough time in Topeka, Kansas. He left when he was 18. He moved to Amsterdam. But, okay, you know, he, he, um, he grew up there. So um, I'm going to show you some pictures of what Kaya, Kayate and me, like, we went to the, to the headquarters of the Westboro <laughs> Baptist Church, <laughs> and we got dressed up like as two sort of weird-looking Aliens, I think the shape. <laughs> they just stared at us in this town. And we, we did like, we went to his high school, like this is where, where Sand spent his six year, the last six years of, of this time in Topeka. And we did like sort of, you know, like just, this is, this is by the way, this is the only digital photography that I ever did. Because this, this I made with a digital, digital camera, not analog. Just as far as that is interesting. Um, so these are pictures. We, we made it for him, and he was very happy, happy about it. We, we really did it to sort of to get some ghosts out of his system, and it worked. It, um, but it's not to uh, hear another one. And in the end, we drive away again, and we we um, tried to get some of the stuff that we got in the, that day out of our system again on the prairie. So, oh. Are you gonna? Bueno, esto es un trabajo que solo muestro las impresiones. Uh, no es para espacios de arte en ese sentido. Porque lo hicimos para un amigo. Uh, es un amigo muy querido que hoy en día vive en, en, en Amsterdam. Se llama Sans Murray Vasnik. Y Sans Murray Vasnik es el, el apellido de su, de su esposo. Y porque se casó en, en Holanda. Pero uh, Sans uh, nació en Topeka, Kansas. Y Topeka, eh, Kansas eh, es el lugar donde hay uh, todos estos reyes uh, del Westboro Baptist Church, no sé cómo se traduce eso, uh, pero según yo es, las imágenes dicen todo. Y so, entonces Riz y Callate, que es un artista de palabras hablante, uh, hicieron como acciones uh, en diferentes lugares en, en, en Topeka, Kansas y se vestieron como extraterrestres lo, raros o locos y hicieron como una documentación en imágenes digitales eso es también el único proyecto de Riz que usó como fotografía digital y no análogo para su, su amigo para sacar espíritus de su sistema y al final de su proyecto también necesitaron como sacar sus experiencias en Kansas City y gritaron en, la, en, el, en el paisaje. Right. So one more. I'm going to show one more project and then I'm finished. Um, and then we can talk. So this is a, a project. It's called Solitary Fruit, and it's based on a book by John Howard Griffin. Um, he made a trip through the Deep South, like uh, Alabama, Mississippi, Louisiana, in 1959. So this is important to keep in mind that this was before the whole segregation um, stuff just happened. It was really like, yeah, 1959. So um, what he did, this is why I put some stress on it, because nowadays it would be considered a very, very uh, political incorrect action, but what he did is like, he was a white man, a white writer, and he wanted to put, he wanted to experience how it would be traveling as a, as a supposedly black man. Um, so what he did is he tried to, 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 to get as black as possible by using drugs or like medicine and, you, and, and sunlight and makeup. And um, he traveled through the Deep South. Now this book had an immense impact in the United States. It, um, added, it had a very positive um, outcome um, in addressing the issues, but of course the method is, if we look back, it's very contradictionary. 
I want to read like uh, I can I just read it in English for first so it is the story of the persecuted the defrauded the feared and the detested and then he writes I could have been a Jew in Germany a Mexican in a number of states or a member of any inferior group only the details would have differed the story would be the same el último trabajo del que nos está platicando Riz eh, se titula Ruta Solitaria y está basada en algo que yo no conocía y me parece increíble. Es un libro de John Howard Reed que se llama Black Like Me, eh, negro como yo, y que consistió en una especie de experimento etnográfico que decía Riz con muy buena razón, que, con mucha razón, eh, que hoy en día podría considerarse políticamente incorrecto y fue este hombre blanco que quiere hacerse pasar por un hombre negro y aparentemente toda esa transformación fue eh, eh, a través de drogas o sea, lo contrario de Michael Jackson estoy pensando <risa> su opuesto anyway, y entonces viaja al sur de los Estados Unidos en los 50, ¿no? finales de los 50 eh, y que fue un libro de muchísimo impacto en Estados Unidos y luego acaba de leer algo que a lo mejor lo podemos traducir and it was a best seller yes, it was a super best seller I don't know, no it's not in this book but it's, it's like millions of copies were sold and uh, he got of course a death threats uh, because you know he he wrote about how he was and um, people in the south especially didn't like it so in his town he, he got like death threats like he was actually like a puppet in the shape of him was hanged on the main square and stuff like this was crazy he was completely um, you know how, how dare you but it helped I mean it helped in, no, in making it uh, getting out there so addressing the discrimination Oh, bueno, mi traducción muy rápido. Este es un cuento de los persecuados, los defraudados, los terminados y los tedestos. Podría ser un judío en, México, en Alemania, un mexicano en muchos estados de, de Estados Unidos o cualquier miembro de un grupo inferior. Solo, solo los detalles serían diferentes. El cuento sería lo mismo. And like in this, like when I read this sentence, I really, I really felt like, wow, this is like a clear invitation to, to other inferior groups to do the same thing. So I thought like, okay, you know, I'm going to transform it into the gender thematic. And uh, so I decided to travel as a guy through the deep south. Since I've been in Mexico, this has been changed for me because, you know, I mostly outside here, I've been approach to being a guy without putting up any makeup or binding breast or whatever um, so I'm a bit confused but still you know it's it's also it's not so much about you know I, I know I look like a guy most of the time there but still it's more about this whole construction of like I was I was not I, like I had this female body there is always like this danger of especially the police like if they ask for identification or stuff they're not such an it's not such an open area the deep south I mean, they still have a lot of problematic situations, I would call it. Um, and what I did, I traveled the same route as, uh, as Griffin did. So I went exactly to the same places, but I tried not to, or I tried, I was very aware not to go to the historical places that are connected to black history, because of course this is not my history. So, you know, I went to Selma, but I didn't go to the Greyhound station, for instance, you know, so I, I only, I took very clearly just the same route as he, do, as he did, but um, nothing, I, I tried to disconnect myself from this history because, of course, what, I cannot say anything about it. And then what I also did is, like, Griffin writes in his book that he didn't change anything except his skin. So no other closing, no other voice, no other name, and this is also what I did. And this was something which was interesting because my voice is not very masculine. And I, with this project, I never met so many people that wanted to talk to me, like constantly because this time I worked in cities. And um, this, is, this is one of the pictures like me preparing for the day, like putting on my beard. And then I just traveled around. I just 
but like putting up a camera, like putting putting up a tripod with a camera and then pressing it and walking back and forth constantly, people are sort of think it's a bit, a bit strange, so they come and they talk to you. And it got me sometimes a little bit into trouble. This is a swamp, this is in Alabama, I think. This is a picture in New Orleans. This is just luck, you know, like I have my 10 seconds, I, I press the button of my camera and I have 10 seconds to get into position and do my thing. And this guy just walks out with this t-shirt that says like, damn, I'm good. And it yeah. seems as if he's wearing my skirt. I mean, for me, <laughs> I don't know, I was sort of thrilled that I had like a situation like that because I cannot plan that, of course, this is something that happens. Then I had this one on Biloxi Beach. I put this one in color because this is the only picture uh, where I wanted to make a clear reference to the book because in the book John Howard Griffin is, is saying that he was not allowed on the beaches like like the black people in, in 59 were only allowed to look at the beaches they were not allowed to go there so this was my statement like to, to show that I am in a privileged position even like going from female to male would put me I think my travel was easier somehow going to the deep south, looking as a guy. The, the moment you get exposed, the moment... I had a traffic accident, for instance, which I just got away from because I thought, like, if the police come, this is not a good situation, you know, then you are in real trouble. But apart from that, just traveling visually as a guy, it's probably easier in the deep south. I think. I never traveled as a, as a woman in the deep south, so... Yeah. yeah, this is also New Orleans. This is one of those pictures, you know, like, I just push this button of my camera and then I run away like to make the picture but this is this is the funny thing like you don't want to do that in cities this is like there are people walking around and stuff so it, it was I had this idea before and the, the actually the making of the work was way more complicated than I thought this is a jazz club in, in Louisiana I think I don't exactly know anymore another one this is Selma and still I also play with the whole American visual language, you know, like the sort of this 50s look, James Dean, like the, the there is always these kind of things in there too. I think this is the last picture. It's not like because you can see that, like my breasts are bounced. This is the way I would present it, also a little bit like a road movie, I consider it. Like a, yeah, let's see. Bueno, ese trabajo se llama como Black Life Me, es como negro, negra como yo. Um, y, uh, no, but mine is not, eh? Mine is called Solitary Fruit. Uh, it's it's a, a, it's a, it's a libro. Yeah. Lo que se pasó en el libro de uh, Black Light Me, uh, de Great. John Howard Griffin, uh, y lo escribió en los 50s, hablando sobre sus experiencias viajando en el sur de, de Estados Unidos uh, como un negro, porque John Howard Griffin uh, uh, fue como blanco, pero con tratamientos, con hormonas y todo eso, y con, con inyecciones, cambió como una, uh, un hombre negro. Gris cambió en ese sentido uh, uh, los herramientas de, de Griffiths y, se, en, en, y lo cambió en el, en el campo de género, porque viajó como un, un hombre, un hombre blanco en el sur de Estados Unidos y visitó, visitó los mismos lugares como Griffin, pero no uh, usó los lugares uh, cruciales de los negros, de las negras, porque para porque Riz, uh, quería como desconectar de la historia negra porque no es su historia, no es su referencia cultural. Y como Griffin no cambió uh, la voz y los trajes que usa normalmente. Vimos como una, una, una fotografía en colores y esa fotografía también hace una referencia al libro porque en este tiempo los negros, las negras no pueden estar en la playa en Estados Unidos, solo pueden visitar la playa. Entonces, en ese sentido, Riz también hace referencia que aunque viaja como hombre, es, como hombre blanco, es en un, es en un lugar privilegiado. Uh, y en general, Riz crea que viajar como hombre es más fácil que mujer en el sur de Estados Unidos, quizás, quién sabe. Uh, y en general, para ella, uh, hacer esta obra estuvo más com complicado como, pen como pensó, porque cuando estás en una ciudad y pongas tu cámara y vas a uh, correr para esta parte del, del marco de la, de la, 
de la cámara de la imagen ya quizás alguien puede robar tu cámara y también cuando pongas la cámara ya la gente, la gente uh, lo entienden como una invitación para hablar con ella o con él, en ese sentido eso ya como la voz podría dar una evidencia o como algo que no es como un hombre en sí que viaja en el sur de, en el sur de Estados Unidos sí, ahorita uh, la presentación se acabó